Hello and welcome back to the second lecture of this complete modern JavaScript course. My name is Manoj Jha and you are watching Procademy classes. In this lecture, we are going to understand what is a code editor. Then we will choose a code editor for writing our JavaScript code. We will also install Visual Studio code in our machine. And we will create a new JavaScript project and we will open it in Visual Studio code. And finally, we will also install some plugins for Visual Studio code. Now Visual Studio code, it is a code editor, which we will use for writing our JavaScript programs. So in order to write JavaScript programs, we need a code editor. Although to start working with JavaScript, you do not need any special development environment. There are only two things that is required to get started with JavaScript. You need a text editor like Notepad to write JavaScript code. And you need a browser like Google Chrome or Firefox to run and test your JavaScript programs. So if you have a text editor like Notepad and a browser installed on your machine, you're good to start writing and running your JavaScript code. But I will not recommend using a text editor like Notepad for writing JavaScript programs. There are some special text editors that are designed specifically for writing and editing source code. And these are called as code editors. So a code editor is like a text editor, but it has many more features which can ease and speed our development process by providing intelligence, showing compiler errors during writing code, help format your code and provide suggestions on writing better code. So a code editor is like a text editor, but it is more specific for writing programs. And you should always use a code editor for writing programs because it provides several benefits. So here in this image, you can see that in the left hand side, I have written a code in a code editor. Here I have used Visual Studio code. And in the right hand side, you can see the same code written in Notepad, which is a text editor. Now here you can see the program written in a code editor is more readable than the one written in the text editor. Also, code lines are properly aligned in the code editor. In the code editor, the keywords are highlighted in different colors, implying that these are reserved keywords. And also, a code editor will display syntax errors, if any, in your program. So, a code editor provides a lot of useful features, which can help us speed up our development process. Now, if you have already installed a code editor on your machine, then you can skip this lecture because in this lecture, I'm mainly going to install a code editor on my local machine and there I'm going to install some plugins. And also in this lecture, I will create a simple project where I will add an HTML file and CSS file and I will open it in the code editor. So if you already have a code editor installed in your machine, then you can skip this lecture. But if you don't already have a code editor installed on your machine, then you can choose code editor from these options. So we have Atom, we have Sublime Text, we have Visual Studio Code, we have Brackets. So all these are code editors and these are free to use. You can choose any one of them. But in this course, I'll be using Visual Studio Code Editor. And if you want to follow along with me, you can also download and install Visual Studio Code as your code editor. Now, to download and install Visual Studio Code as your code editor, you need to go to this link. I have already opened this link in the browser. So let's go to the browser. And here I have opened this link code.visualstudio.com. Here you will see that we have this download button. And here it will select the operating system of your machine automatically. If it has not selected the operating system automatically, you can click on this drop down and you can select your operating system. Here I'm using Windows operating system. So this option is already selected for me. And I'm going to click on this download button. What it will do is it will start downloading the installer for Visual Studio Code. So let's wait for that download to complete. As you can see, the download is finished and Visual Studio Code installer is downloaded. Now what I need to do is I need to open this installer. So I can simply click on that and it will open an installation window. Now here you need to accept the agreement. So click on this radio button and click on next. Then here you can select where do you want to install this code editor. I'm going to keep the default file path here. Let's click next. Then here you can see that this setup will create a program shortcut in the following start menu folder. Let's click on next here. 
and here I'm going to keep the default settings. Let's click next again and let's click on install and it will install Visual Studio Code in my local machine. So the installation steps are very simple. You just need to follow the installation instructions and you can simply click on next on each window. Here the installation is finished. Let's click on this finish button. Now VS Code will be opened automatically here. So VS Code is installed on my machine. Now in the next step, we are going to create a new folder, a project folder somewhere in our PC and we are going to open that folder from VS Code. For that, here I'm on my desktop. I'll right click here. Let's click on new folder and I'm going to create this folder and I'll call it JavaScript source. Okay. Inside this folder again, I'll create a new folder and this one I'll call it JavaScript basics. All right, now let's go inside this folder. Let's copy the path or maybe what we can do is we can go to VS Code itself. There we can go to file, open folder. Let's go to desktop. There we have this folder JavaScript source. Let's go inside that. And there we have this folder JavaScript basics. So this is going to be our project folder for this section. I'll select this folder and I'll click on the select folder button. Currently in this folder, we don't have any files. So here I can check this checkbox and I'll click on yes, I trust the authors. All right. Now currently in this folder, we don't have any files. So here we are going to create two files, one HTML file and one CSS file. For that, you can click on this button, new file. And here let's provide a name. Let's call it index.html. Let's press enter and that file has been created. Now we are going to write some HTML here and for now, we will simply generate a basic HTML template. For that, what you can do is you can press shift one on your keyboard and press tab. So it will automatically generate some template HTML for you. Here, if you see in the body section, we don't have anything, but it has created a basic template. Here, let me provide a title. Let's say JS fundamentals. And in the body section for now, let's simply add an H2 element. And here, let's say fundamentals of JavaScript. Okay, so here we have created an HTML file. Now, the next thing which I'm going to do is I'm also going to create a CSS file and I'll call it style.css. Here, for now, I'm not going to write any CSS, but I'm going to link this style.css to this index.html. For that, let's go to index.html. There in the head section, let's add link tag and there. Let's specify href to style.css. Okay, rel will be style sheet. And let's specify the type as text slash CSS. All right, let's save the changes. And just to test it, what we will do is here for the H2 element, let's add a simple style. Let's set the color to maybe red. Let's save the changes. Now let's go to our project folder and there let's double click on this index.html to run it in the browser. And now you can see the HTML which we have written in index.html that has been rendered here. All right. Now what we are also going to do is we are going to install some plugins for our Visual Studio code. And we are going to install two plugins, auto save on window change and live server plugin. So currently what is happening is if I go to index.html and if I do some changes here, if I don't save it and if I go to the browser, you will not see that change. For that, you will have to first save it. And then now when you go to the browser and when you refresh the page, it will show that change. So currently we have to manually save our files but using this plugin auto save on window change what it will do is whenever the window will change whenever we move from visual studio code to some other window the changes will be saved automatically so we will not have to manually save our changes every time we change something in the file so let's go to vs code and to install a plugin you need to go to this extensions section here there 
you will see a lot of extensions a lot of plugins which you can add for your visual studio code but here let's search for auto save on windows change okay so this is a plugin name let's click on that and currently it is already installed for me but if it is not installed for you you will see the install option here you can simply click on that and it will install that plugin for visual studio code okay so now every time we will make some changes in our file it will be automatically saved if i remove it from here currently this file is not saved that's why you will see this white dot here but as soon as i change the window as soon as i move away from visual studio code let's see if i go to the browser and if i come back again you will see that it has automatically saved so this is the use of this plugin auto save on windows changes now the next plugin which we want to install is this live server plugin and what this plugin will do is it will launch a live development server in our local machine and it will run our index.html file in that live development server currently what we did is we double clicked on this index.html file and it opened it in the browser but here in the url bar you will see that it is showing the path of that file the complete path of that file but i want to run this index.html file in live development server for that let's go back to vs code and here let's search for live server extension so here we have this live server extension click on that and again it is already installed for me but if it is not installed for you you will see an install option here instead of uninstall again you can click on that button and it will install this extension this plugin for visual studio code and now if i go to index.html there if i go to view command palette there you can search for live server it is already showing me here so when i will click on this option what it will do is it will open this index.html file in a live development server so if i click on it you see it has opened it in a live development server and here in the address bar you can see that this index.html file our application it is running on this ip address 127.0.0.1 which is the ip address for localhost and it is running on port number 5500 okay so let me close this one and let me also resize this window here like this and let's also resize this window okay now if i do some changes here and if i come to this window you will see that the changes are automatically displayed i did not have to save my changes and i did not have to reload the page so these are the two extensions which i wanted to install for my visual studio code and you can also collapse this file explorer by simply clicking on this button so it will collapse again when you click on it it will show it so this is all from this lecture in the next lecture we are going to write our first javascript program thank you for listening and have a great day